Okay, I've switched on my Raspberry Pi Model B and it's already connected to my little circuit which contains a single red LED. What I'm going to do now is uh, run a Python script written in Python 2 that's going to turn the LED on and off. So I'm going to show you the Python script. I'm going to open the Python idle editor so I can run the code and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's actually running on the circuit board. Uh, at the end of the video I'll just show you a website where you can get more information about Raspberry Pi and Python and other computer science topics. So I'm now going to open up the LX terminal and once that's opened you'll see this. So this is Linux. Uh, the prompt is pi at Raspberry Pi with a dollar sign. Now when we open up idle it has to be in super user mode because we need to be an uh, administrator or super user in order to be able to control the general purpose I.O. pins, the GPIO. So I'm going to open idle as super user. So now I'm going to type sudo idle. Okay, so it's now, take a few seconds, it's going to load the idle environment, and here it is. Top left hand corner you can see Python 2.7.3, and I'm now going to open up my script that I prepared earlier, and I'll give you um, information on how to get access to that file at the end of this video. So, I'm going to access my file now, I select file, top left hand corner, and then mine's, I'll, go, I'll go to the recent file because I used this one earlier and it's ledblinking.py so this is my file uh, this is written in Python 2 and when it runs it's going to ask me for the number of times I want the LED to blink and also the length of each blink in seconds then it's going to turn the LED on and off as I requested and when it's finished it will say done. So what I'm going to do is run the code and try and uh, move the camera down so you can see it actually running uh, and controlling the LED. Uh, it might be slightly out of focus but... Right, so what I'm going to do now is run the code so I select run, run module and as you can see now it's going to say enter the total number of times to blink. Right, let's say we want to blink four times. And enter the length of each blink in seconds. So if I type one it'll do four blinks for one second at a time. It'll give me enough time to move the camera. When it's finished it'll say done. And then I can run the code again if I wish. So what I'm going to do is uh, quickly get behind the camera after starting the code. So I'm going to type 1. When I press enter, I'm going to see if I can uh, move my camera down quickly. So 1, I'm pressing enter. And it's already started blinking, but there you go. And now it's finished. And it's four blinks. If I go back to the screen, you'll see it says done. Every time it does, um, every time it lights the LED, it says iteration one for the first time, iteration two, and so on. So there you can see the output from the Python code, and you saw the uh, Python code controlling the LED. So this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to point the camera at the LED and tell you what I'm doing on the big screen. So I'm now looking at the LED. Right, let's... I'm now going to run the program again. So I'm going to close the Python shell and now I'm looking at my code, ledblinking.py I select the run menu and then select run module. Now right now it's going to come up with and it is now 
asking me enter the number of times to blink. So this time let's have four times and let's have one second for the length of each blink. And when I'm pressing enter now and you should see the light coming on. It's saying iteration one, iteration two, iteration three, iteration four and done. So, you now need to get access to the code. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to close this down and close. This is my code. I'm going to close this down and I've got, I'll close the terminal. Now, if you go into Midori, Midori is a, a web browser. I went into it earlier so I could show you my home page. Now, if you go to andawson.net, I'm going to put another link here, just next to Python, for Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to do that right now. So by the time you've seen this video, there will be a new link up there for Raspberry Pi. I might abbreviate it to RPI. And from there, I'll give you links to code, uh, photographs of circuits, and uh, links to videos such as this one. And that's the end of this short video.